All right, so today we're gonna to talk a little bit about the three-legged stool concept with, uh, with regards to training, nutrition, and sleep. And I'm gonna to try to not ramble on and not faff about too much in this video. I'll just try to keep it uh, fairly short uh, because the concept really isn't as uh, detailed or there's not a huge amount to dive into uh, sort of to make it a useful concept to visualize. If you're a little bit more of an elite athlete, you may have already know this. Um, I, f I found this analogy, this, this three-legged stool analogy, quite useful for myself to kind of visualize um, and, and reinforce how important uh, the three legs of the stool are, just because when you think about a three-legged stool, if you, if you pull a leg off, it's not standing up. So without further ado, we'll kind of get into the uh, with, get into the concept. It's fairly simple. You have a three-legged stool, and this uh, this is in regards to training, and getting better on a bicycle, bike racing, uh, getting fitter. Uh, you know, if it doesn't matter what level of cycling you're at. This concept applies, and that three-legged stool, uh, the three-legged stool concept really applies. So the three legs of the stool are fairly simple. You've got training, sleep and nutrition and I would actually um, I would actually or list them in order of importance uh, and this, uh, this is my opinion nutrition sleep training that would be my kind of my list of importance so that's the that's the concept in a nutshell it's fairly basic and really the the useful part of the concept is really to, to be able to visualize how important each of those legs are and we can just dive into each of those concepts really quickly and kind of outline which what each one looks like so first sleep <laughs> fairly simple you need sleep uh, everybody's different everybody needs a certain amount um, and that like, it, it differs based on the person some people do uh, much better on a little bit less sleep uh, some people need a lot of sleep so experiment around see what works going off of your natural uh, sleep rhythm and sleep routine and kind of letting your body do what it wants uh, is going to be really helpful. Also, it will change in the seasons. Uh, you know, we've evolved with the sun, sun up, sun down as kind of the start of the day and end of the day uh, for millions of years, and that uh, that hasn't gone away in the last um, last little bit with the with electricity, and and, uh, and so that is still ingrained within us. Think about uh, think about your sleep a lot. Uh, maybe a little bit more than you do and uh, and that's gonna be a, a one leg of a stool so the, the second leg nutrition we're kind of doing these out of my listed listed order of importance but uh, the nutrition getting the fuel in to fuel your day fuel your workouts so so important and I, I can't stress that enough along with that comes water uh, getting enough fluid in and uh, you know you can supplement with electrolyte within your within your fluid intake and as needed, but just the the fluid intake is is so so important. We can we can do a whole other you know deep dive on nutrition, and I can I can get somebody who has a has a degree in it to uh, actually do a deep dive uh, if people are interested. So comment below if you want that, and um, and comment any questions. So that's kind of the, the second leg of the stool. Now the last leg of the stool, the third leg, and this is in my level or my, in my order of importance. So the third third level of importance, training. You do need stimuli on your body. You do need stress on your body for in order for it to adapt. The th reason it's number three on my list of importance on the the three legged stool concept is uh, people there's there's this mis misconception. Um, and I find it, I run into it a lot in cycling that training needs to be incredibly specific to an individual. And yes, to a certain degree it does. We as human beings are not as delicate, our uh, physiology is not as delicate as people think, not as delicate as sort of marketers would, would like you to believe. Uh, the simple fact is your body takes time to adapt to stimuli and yes it is sensitive but the exact it does not need to be 
exact training down to the detail. There will be some variations. When we're talking about training for bike racing in particular, there are a huge amount of variables within bike racing. And so, uh, as it should be in training. So, you know, getting that, uh, that perfect ride nutrition, you can get it pretty close, but it's not gonna be perfect. And, and that should be good enough. Um, and then it is just consistency over time getting work done. And so our physiology is, is not as, as delicate as, as people think. And so that's why my list is, is ordered the way it is with training number, uh, with training number three. So that's it. Uh, I hope you got something out of this uh, kind of concept or this, this visual aid. Uh, it was really useful to me when I was first introduced to this, and this applies to, you know, I wasn't introduced to this from a cyclist. This was from somebody in another sport, um, and uh, I was quite grateful to have uh, to have the, the concept to kind of, to really think about. And it has helped me tremendously just uh, keep in mind how important nutrition and sleep are, because as cyclists, we tend to get very caught up in the training and, and the riding and kind of forget about the, you know, the rest of the 80% of the, of the picture with that. So that's it. Hope you enjoyed. It's on a bit more of a, an update note, personal note. It's getting pretty close to crunch time for me. We're about, uh, about two weeks out from heading down south and then the season starts. So stay tuned for some exciting stuff and, uh, and yeah, it's going to be really good. Ride safe out there. Thank you for watching. Hope you got something out of this video. And I'll see you in the next one. Ciao.